talk about this when you said give your sports opinion. I wanted to talk about this, but I didn't want to go too far into it because I thought this was a bigger discussion. Watching a lot of basketball podcasts lately in my free time off of free agency and everything. This name got brought up again, and I'm thinking I'm going to ask this question. And this is scary for Dallas Maverick fans because we've talked about Oklahoma City in their offseason. How great can Jalen Williams become? He just turned 23 at the end of the season. So next year, he's going to play the whole regular yep. season at 23 years old. He's the six foot six guard uh, that they drafted 12th overall in 2022. They have two Jalen Williams. Right. Then they have the Arkansas bigger Jalen Williams, who's kind of a power forward center type of guy. This is the guard guy who was really good in the playoffs against the Mavs. He averaged 17 points on 42.4% shooting, 38% from the three-point line. Do you remember what six we... and a half rebounds and 5.7 assists in the play, in the Maverick series. My apologies, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. Do you remember what we said going into that series? You might not know the name Jalen Williams now, but you will. Yeah, so here's my question. With what he did in the playoffs, by the way, in round one when they swept New Orleans, he averaged 21, seven rebounds and five assists. Do you think he could step up and be – he's a little bit different defensively. He's solid defensively. You know how Jalen Brown, you're like now it's like 50-50 on who's better, yeah. Tatum or Brown, and he won both the MVPs in the playoffs? Yet I do think Tatum's great and could sure. have won either one too. Are we in a scary part where we look at Oklahoma City and go, we could get to next year and go, oh, crap, Shea and Jalen Williams are both top 10 players in this league? I I think Jalen might take another year beyond that, but I'll tell you what will help with his progression. And you were talking about his defense. Man, oh man, did he start to figure out the three this year. I I, I realize he's still not a prolific three-point shooter, but he increased by getting close to one extra three-pointer per game. If he stretches that out at a 40 or plus 40% clip, that's terrifying. Yeah, Yeah. and Jalen Williams, he's wing just to be a little bit clearer there. I think one of the things for him is during the course of the season, you remember the the game in which um, the first game that P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford play and the Mavericks get a big-time win against that Thunder team. One of the things that was interesting was Jalen Williams driving downhill. He has that in his bag. However, he can be a little predictable. I was, I was impressed by how he saw them again in the postseason, and he had a little bit more to his drive. I think that that's also a place where if he adds more – um, and I think he will, in fact, I, when he adds more, in fact, uh, to his ability to get downhill and the finish, you know, with contact and finish in a way that's not predictable. I think that, yeah, he has all star potential. And so I don't think that he could be one and one a with uh, Shay. I think Shay is above him in that way. But they could be a very close one and two to the point where it's like, oh, this is this is a problem for the league. It's not exactly a parallel, but the one thing that you hope is. It also feels like there's a ton of room for Derek Lively to progress in a couple of different avenues. So that's what I immediately thought of. I I know, very different players, but I'm scared about Jalen Williams, but I'm also optimistic about how much better Derek Lively could potentially be. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I'm going to stick right here with Oklahoma City for my next Oklahoma City question because I I think that Oklahoma City is going to be a major problem for Dallas the next two years, and Dallas is going to be a major problem for Oklahoma City. Is who do you think will be better two years from now as the number two guy? If we go to that Shea's always going to be number one, Jalen won't take that over. Do you think Chet I'd or Jalen? I'm probably going to say Chet because I realize he had the injury. But, man, oh, man, you look at his numbers from this year and the fact that the fact that he stayed healthy was big for me just because you look at his body type and you worry that maybe he'll be a little frailer. But the fact that he was just fine, I think it's going to go Chet, but I understand your question. Yeah, that's probably a good way of looking at it. Um, Chet just, I think there's more potential there because of like the the ways that he can stretch, the defensive prowess, all those things. I still lean towards Jalen Williams right now. Maybe that's just like a recency bias, seeing him and being impressed with him. Uh, but I, I really like what Jalen Williams has as well. You know, it's going to be interesting is Oklahoma City is going to be put in a situation which it doesn't matter for, for the next two years. And I want to talk about the Mavs salaries. How low the Mavs salaries are, looking at what we've been kind of, I can't believe, like Patrick Williams and Jonathan, uh, Isaac. Jonathan Isaac. If you look at what P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford are oh making, 
they are going to when they hit free agency they are going to be 25 to 30 million dollar players a year the way that this this um the way salaries are going up and right now you have them for approximately under 15 million a piece yes and you look at what teams are paying now for people like that and you're like wow the mavericks have a great window where they won't go into apron two because they have so many players Derek lively obviously for the next three years is under a rookie deal uh and so you just look at what they've been able to do salary structure wise and i look at oklahoma city the same way as like for the next two years neither team has to worry about aprons for the most part but i wonder about oklahoma city if they create this super team which they might have done again now they didn't win a title with the first super team because they said we can't pay it yeah we're not maxing out three guys plus we got a couple other guys that we really like that are role players that we want to pay and we'll keep the role players and turn harden into down the future down the road assets is you're gonna have to at the same time max out jalen williams max out chet holmgren at that point shea might be a super max guy like I just wonder if they've lined up the Harkenstein. Think of it; he's a thirty million dollar guy. Yeah, which, that was which a, Derek yeah. Lively's going to be a forty yeah. million dollar guy. You have him for three to four years at your number, and then Lively's going to be forty plus million a year after that, which lines up a little bit with um, kind of I would assume the regression of Kyrie Irving and yeah. kind of him coming off the books as a 40 plus million dollar player and I look at what they did and I do think they're smart to go we can afford a 30 million dollar center right now when his contract runs out we obviously now have to up these guys salaries by 30 plus million a year and so I can see where Oklahoma City has already set this up to go we can give these guys extra help by the time these two guys get maxed out we can't give those guys those extra player help guys anymore yeah that that's that's an interesting breakdown and it does feel to me like oklahoma city has emerged and honestly right now i think denver might have fallen to third in my west power rankings right yeah. now and i mean some of that is depth and one of the things oh, for that, sure um mike you're talking about kind of the the ways in which that cap situation starts building on you once you get players that are paid a lot one of the things that Sam Presti has been really proactive about, they have so much draft capital available to them so that they can continue to draft they young players in. only have five first-rounders next year. Yeah, only. <laughs> only a sixth of the first round for That's next like year. It's like more than we have for the next decade. And one of the things that they've also been really smart about is they continue to shift those forward when they need to, right? They'll give you a current first-round pick so that they can get one in five years. And so I think that they'll do a good job of once those salaries start hitting, having those draft picks available to get young talent in there to build around the costly pieces around them as well.